Hi there, this is the Evan Jr. and this tutorial will finally continue my tutorial series on making a driving game in Blender. We have already created some of the level objects, hopefully, and textured them, and they're all ready to be appended into a main file here. We have also discussed some of the Python coding, which is going to be required for when we actually do some of the coding for the game and we've gone through the some of the logic nodes and different things we're actually going to be using inside the logic editor so this tutorial is basically going to cover everything that you need to know about creating your game level and to start off with all we're going to do is talk about um, importing well appending and linking really so to start off with I've set my render engine to Blender Game and I've done a bit of setup on it. Make sure to switch it to GLSL. And what I'm going to do is I've created a new file <clears throat> and this is going to contain my actual levels. Now, this is useful uh, for a number of reasons, but mainly because it just keeps everything organized. And I have an original copy of the objects should I want to go back and edit them at all. So, to start off with, um, we're going to append some of the objects, well all of the objects in fact, that we created in the previous tutorials. Now, there is a distinct difference between linking and appending. Okay, A link actually takes the object along with its position, along with all of its data, and just shoves a reference to it inside your new Blender file. Okay, So the difference between linking and appending is that linking only contains a reference so you can't actually do anything with the object you can't move it about you can't edit it you can't change it you have to actually create a new object from it with appending however you're basically creating a duplicate of that object inside your new blender file and that's what we want because we want to be able to move it around we might want to change some of the things you know so we're going to choose append as opposed to link. All right. So I'm now inside my previous blend file, which was gameobjects.blend. Inside of it, we've got um, it, everything's categorized by its type. So brushes, cameras, groups, images, lamps, materials, meshes, objects, scenes, textures, and the worlds. We're going to choose um, object as opposed to mesh. And inside of here, we have all of our objects inside of the previous blend file. Now, first of all, I'm just going to do this one by one for now to make sure that everything's appended properly. So making sure link is not checked, um, I'm going to select buildings 01. Okay, I'm going to rotate that and I'm going to have to add a light, so add a new point lamp and there we can see there we can see we have our it's not rotated correctly, never mind 90 degrees along the x-axis so there we can see that we have our uh, buildings are one from our blend file so I'm just going to go ahead and append the rest of them There we go. So these are the three buildings. Pavement segment. I'm going to need that. Uh, road segment. And I'm going to select all of these. Street lamp, street lamp guide, street lamp lamp, street lamp point, and street lamp spot. So there we have a street lamp. Now, as you can see, when we actually first created the object, the scales was not appropriate really. So all we really have to do is just resize some of these. So I think I'm just going to do that. Yeah, you might notice some visual artifacts and weird things going on. That's because I, I believe it's because I recently updated my graphics driver and it's messed up OpenGL completely. But it could also be a Blender bug. I'm not sure you'd have to check that. 
But certainly for me, there's been some weird things happening. So I'm afraid you're gonna have to, just gonna have to put up with that. But that's about right, scale-wise. <clears throat> that's a street lamp. And the road. I'm going to rotate it along the X. Make sure I get the right axis. The UV's the UV's messed up for some reason. Why is it messed up for some reason? Might have to uh, do some map wrapping with that then. So that's that. Um, I'm gonna do this. I think I can rotate it 90 degrees. And we'll see what that does, if anything. Yeah, that's fine. Don't know why it's done that. I apologise. So you might have to do that yourselves as well. That's not really going to affect these because that's pretty much uniform. It doesn't really matter which direction that's in. The pavement or sidewalk, depending on whether you're American or not. Okay, so that's pretty much everything imported from our original blend file. So first of all, what I'm going to do is just do a couple of convenience things on the view. So if you hit N, it's going to bring up the sidebar here. And underneath the display, first of all, un uncheck X and Y axes and also grid floor. And you'll see why in a minute. So now we've got this the view's a bit nicer to work with. Make sure relationship lines are off and shadings obviously uh, as GLSL because otherwise we won't see our textures. I should really snap it, the um, cursor to the center like that and then add it so that I'm sure that it's nicely on this x-axis line here, x and y-axis. All right. So first of all, a couple of things. When we're doing mapping, well, I say mapping, I mean creating game levels. We're going to use, we can just use the array modifier, as previously mentioned here on this road, making sure the offset is set to Y depending upon which way you want your road to be pointing, remember. Okay, so that's our section of road there. I've already shown in the previous tutorial how we can combine curves with this um, to create bends. Now, this is a bit more difficult because what you, you also have to remember that you, if you're having pavement along with it, that also has to be along a, a curve. Alright, now wireframe mode in this is also a huge help. And I'm just going to position that on slightly on top of the road like that. And of course bring it along. doesn't really matter if these intersect. It's probably actually advised if they do. Okay, now with this pavement, we're lucky enough that we can just simply stretch it in edit mode. And I would advise using wireframe for this if you can the axis right okay so with this I can easily create a the, the stretching appears now when we actually run it in game it disappears let's hit the P key to go in game Right, so once we've actually finished creating our street, and we've populated both sides with buildings and things, and maybe put in a couple of street lamps, then what we can do is delete this game floor here, because we don't need it anymore. And we don't really want them to see the, you know, want, want it to have to be rendered, or the game to have to rely on it being there. Or actually for the player to see it at any point. Now, the first thing we can do is delete, perhaps consider deleting some of these lights and just relying on the street lamps. Now we might have to obviously move the street lamp out. If I could try and grab that, Blend is having a bit of a hiccup with um, selection at the moment. Um, if you press Shift and 
uh, right, yeah, right square bracket, it'll select, as well as the original object, it'll select all of its children. So I'm gonna just going to bring that out like that. That's going to help light the scene, I think. And I'm going to rotate that along with the axis and bring that in. Okay, now the problem with this as it stands here is the fact that it kind of looks like daytime. Now, with game level creation, a lot of it is the atmosphere that you create. A lot of how well people perceive the level of as being designed is to do with the atmosphere. And one of the things that as a level develop as a level um, designer you can actually use to help create an atmosphere are what's called negative lamps. Now these are good in just general 3D work because they're good for faking things. So when lighting isn't doesn't seem right or realistic or just odd, then we can bring in negative lamps, you know, to fake effects. But here we're going to use it instead to create sort of darkness. So under our light settings, or lamp settings, if we go down to here and check negative, you'll see that already how potent the negative lamps are to start off with. Now the color value can give us very interesting effects when we use it like this and can give, you know, sort of neon sort of feel to it. Because of the way it sort of interlaces with the black, it can give very interesting color effects. Um, so that's worth taking note of. But what we're trying to achieve here is this sort of darkness. Now, in order to get the perfect darkness on the perfect area, it's a matter of playing around with two values, the energy and the fall-off distance. You might consider changing the fall-off to inverse linear. That generally helps a bit. And we can use this to sort of have a sort of guess at how the lighting's going to work. So as we move the point lamp about, we can see that it's taking away some of the light that's being supplied to the scene. Now the lamp somewhere, there we go, this lamp here is very bright. So as we move this away we can see the sort of effect that it's having on the negative lamp. In order for the two to perfectly cancel each other out, these energy val this energy value must be equal to the same energy value as the actual lamp lamp, rather than the negative lamp. That's common sense really. Um, so in order to help create some of this darkness, I'm just going to position it nicely. Remember, it has to really be in the middle of the road, because otherwise it's not going to affect evenly both sides. So I think that's a bit too powerful, so I'm just going to tone that down, like that. So that when we play it, it looks a lot more like a sort of night scene, especially if I add in, if I go down to the world settings, and change the world color. So it's starting to look more like a night scene. And of course, along with negative lamps, we can also use colored lamps to introduce the idea of lights being on in buildings. Uh, 0 0.65? No, still way too much. Don't turn sphere on. 0.25. It's a bit better. So we can use this sort of we can use this point lamps to create the idea of lights being on in the buildings. And negative lamps to create the idea of darkness. Even when we've got quite a bright sort of scene. And if you look at the images, the images were originally of uh, buildings in the daytime. So they're inherently light already, which isn't something we really want. So using negative lamps can be can have a really good impact on your scene. If you'd like to see what I've produced, I have a level which I've already made here, using some of these techniques in a very sort of simplistic fashion. And 
Finally, we're going to, in the next couple of tutorials, talk about things like the skybox, so setting up the environment, and we're actually going to go ahead and add the car and start doing the game logic.